themselves talking about the importance of Johnny and Marsha. Have a look. And um, we had just moved up to San Francisco. We got a call and an invitation from a very enthusiastic Johnny Suzuma, who was in New Jersey. I remember going out uh, to the El Cerrito house, the Metallo Mansion, uh, going around to a phone booth at the bars and him talking to Johnny over the phone. And, um, you know, it's like, yeah, I was just connected with this guy who got the tape. And, um, you know, back then, tape trading was the thing. That's how you got your music around. Just remember talking on the phone with him and, and Lars was saying, hey, you know, this guy in New Jersey really likes us and he wants to, like, he, he's passionate about us and it feels great, it feels right. We were ready for whatever at that time. Threw all our shit in a U-Haul truck. Spent about a week going across the country and uh, ended up in Old Bridge, New Jersey. We never had ever seen it. Nothing. And we hop in this new hall and go out. And I remember when we pulled up through this house eventually, one of the first things we had to tell them was, hey, we're here and now uh, we're getting rid of our lead guitar player. You know? <laughs> He's like, okay, you know, well, let's, let's keep going. We share the same vision. So uh, it, it felt absolutely right. Well, when I first arrived at the music festival, I remember meeting those guys, the rest of the guys in the band, and we started with the first two or three days, and then someone saying, yeah, Johnny, he's the guy who, who started uh, the record label, and it was signing us, and we got all this second song. We were going to go out to a store for the first time out in New Jersey, Rockwell Heaven, so we all piled in the car, and then the very first picture I took with the band, was up that day out in the parking after seeing uh, 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 Johnny and Marsha rocking the heaven. And um, at some point, it just became uh, intolerable to stay with music that we There's no hot water, no heat, it's winter time, it's snow, it was just horrible. So we all moved into Johnny's house, <laughs> into the basement. And then that was something. <laughs> Ground zero for everything that's Metallica and, and, and the Zazulas, uh, you know, was in Old Bridge, New Jersey, was their house. But uh, I believe it was 60 York Street. You know, most of us didn't quite have the highest degree of social skills. <laughs> but uh, uh, we managed to get through it without uh, anybody getting too pissed off. And, and underneath it, obviously, was a, a sense of love, a sense of connection, a sense of of, um, of appreciation for, for the doors that were open. Yeah, we were taken in by Johnny and Marcia, and they were, you know, parent life, which was cool, which, you know, uh, was needed at the time. Uh, we were just wild and kind of unruly and, uh, we knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how to get there, you know, and he helped us get there. Yeah, very, very, very kind and loving. Uh, him and his family were there, and, you know, we're like extended family now. Metallica is in the house. <laughs> we liked it because it was like an actual, like, roof over our heads, and that we weren't staying in an office building. I mean, we were, it felt like we were in a house, even though it was just the basement, you know, and four cots were lined up in the basement. It was, it was great. We basically, you know, would sleep down in the basement, we would eat meals with them, the family, uh, the kids, and, and there was definitely a, a very communal energy about all of it. Johnny and, and Marsha obviously were the sort of the parents to not just their own kids, but to all of us. And um, they were very patient and gracious uh, to uh, let us sleep and, and kind of uh, sort of inhabit their whole world. You know, in our late teens, early 20s, kind of freaking out, and then we were crazy in the 30s, throwing stuff, and you know, raiding the liquor cabinet. I remember we, um, yeah, it was in the liquor cabinet, and we popped open some bad bottle of champagne, and he was like this. Dude, I'm saving that. That was the champagne from our wedding. And it's like, uh, you know, so they put up a lot of shit from us. 
he found us a place to live after that <laughs> at Mount Joe's house out, there, out in a more of a farm area uh, where we could just kind of be wild animals and not destroy his house. We didn't have anyone else. There's like no one else uh, to help us out at that point on the East Coast. And, and we didn't have any money, we didn't have any, any allies on the East Coast, you know, call up and go, hey, can I just stay on your couch? We, we, none of us have any of that. So Johnny and Marsha opening up their house to us was an amazing thing. What set uh, the Zazulas apart was that they were extremely passionate. You know, they oh, were no! loving They loved them. They had worked with, you know, Campbell. They had done a few things with Venom and Raven. Yeah, they had other bands who were working with, but we felt we were cared for by them. They were representing the Calico well. You know, most other management companies were, you know, they had a whole roster of bands and you kind of had to, hello, can we get some tour support or help us, you know? Uh, it was one-on-one -on -one with us. But they were just a great team, uh, John and Marsha. And Marsha was the backbone and really, you know, kept all these lunatic guys in line. Underneath all that was also a love for the music, a love for her husband, love for family, love for the bands. But uh, she had to wear many, many hats and do it uh, very, very well. But she definitely keep everybody in line when they had to, but you know, underneath it, obviously, we knew that um, she was part of the game, so to speak. I probably met Johnny and Martha, and uh, he always treated me with love and respect, and uh, so did Marsha. So for that, I am always grateful to him and his belief in me, his belief in me as a professional musician, because when I first met him, I wasn't very professional. He just always genuinely believed in me and knew that I'd be great for any band and of course when I was able to be a part of the Metallica family and I always thought that was very cool to have that belief that I could be in Metallica and I could hold my own. They totally believed in us and you know, you know with the young band there's no guarantees. They really stuck their, stuck their neck out for us. I mean we were an unknown band. There was nobody in America that was kind of doing what we were doing and that there was nobody who was believing in it. And uh, Johnny and Marsha were the first ones to sort of step up and go, we believe in this, we believe that these like-minded musicians, these like-minded folks, you know, we can connect them to more people. It was, it was pretty cool to see once Kilimall came out and then and then it all started and, and Johnny and Marshall were just like above himself. So we were so happy. And then like, not like, long after that, they start, you know, really, started really sad. And it was cool because it started to feel like there was some sort of like heavy metal community. I know in their hearts they were super proud of being a, a significant part of our journey and, and uh, we looked at sort of what they were part in creating in terms of, of spreading uh, this type of music and these types of bands. We miss you, we love you, you'll always be thought of in high regard. Woo! John and Marshall are always a special place in my heart as will the rest of the family and all the incredible cast characters that we met uh, through them. The Zazula family definitely made some sacrifices. Uh, extremely grateful. I mean, words, words can't say how uh, happy and grateful I am for them taking in this unruly wild bunch of devil heads. Um, and you know, Johnny and Marsha were that too. But they had a family. I mean, they, had, they were trying to raise a family, and him taking a chance on us, uh, you know, investing his time, his money, his effort into this. So, yeah, I would like them to know that we are so grateful because without that step in our careers, we wouldn't be where we are today. So, thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, before we get the band out here and get the music started, I would like you to give a round of applause, please, for the daughters of John and Marcia Z. Stevie Wonder at 14 years old when he was uh, 14. See the Cream's first shows on uh, at a Murray K show at the Fox Theater on 58th Street. Again, not going to school at the age of 13, 14 years old, 15 years old. And music's been a part of my life forever. In my household, there was always music. My mother loved music. Uh, as a young girl, as young as six, I went to my first Broadway musical. My parents always, um, I, w I went to the uh, Leonard Bernstein Young People's Concerts. Music was always played all the time in my house. I wasn't as adventurous as John. I was a nice little girl from Brooklyn, so we didn't go into Manhattan and go see the shows, but uh, there was always music around me. And, and as a result, I was always open to listen to all types of music. See, we had a policy. We'll play music in our store that we've taken home and approved. The last thing I wanted to do is put on a metal album that sucked. Or play a, a, one of millions of cassettes that sucked. And we had a very select group of CDs, or well, excuse me, cassettes that we would sell. And the store had people in it. And I wasn't going to play a tape from a band that I never heard of. What if it sucked? But the guy says, John, Marshall, you got to hear this. You're going to fucking flip out. And uh, I, I, I asked Marshall if it's okay. And he said, Woo! And we put it in. And it was, uh, I don't know what it was, but it, when we heard the mechanics, we saw the mechanics. It was all over for me. I mean, I was gaga. I thought this was the answer to every problem America was having with music. You know, there was no Motorhead here. There was no Iron Maiden here. There was none of that stuff here. And Metallica, these guys, man, sounded just... It was a sound of their own. We had never heard it on any, anything else. It was perfect. I spoke to Lars on the phone and there was a promise made to him that there could be at least 12 shows that we would do together. I just knew and wanted to be involved and Marshall wanted to be involved in Renaissance people like we are today and what is on the edge of what is exciting. We were in love with Anvil at the time. We were more than in love with Raven at the time. And Metallica was our America. That was the band that we were going to have from America that we were going to try to work with. And we were going to come over or something. And just say that I know she's fine. <laughs> you know, that was pretty much the, the most that could have come out of that phone call. And drop everything you're doing. Give up your life. I have $1,500. I can pay for a rental of a van. Come on over. You know, no, no discussions of money. 
no discussions of how are you gonna live, how are you gonna eat. Just come on down. We're gonna do some shows, which is for all of us.